I got to tell you, the weather reports up here in the north are weird. The other day it was zero degrees, and the weatherman says it's going to be twice as cold tomorrow. Okay, what temperature is that exactly? <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Saturday, January 21st. Now, through the week, we look at hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have potential. We're looking at stocks that have run. And we look at about 12 to 16 of them, I guess. Now, I find these stocks that we talk about the same day we talk about them. I find them through the day as I'm trading, as I'm posting news, and I'm doing my due diligence and research through all of that. So by the time 4 o'clock gets here, I can make my video, share the information with you so that you can use it in a timely manner for tomorrow or the next day. So as you would expect, I'm not doing any deep dives on these stocks. So, occasionally I do miss information or I misunderstand or just completely miss something. So, with that in mind, I got two stocks I need to update you on that we covered this last week. One is Volta. Volta did a merger with Shell Company. We presumed, I did, that there was going to be a share conversion, that your Volta shares would be converted into Shell shares. Well, that's not the case. It is a complete buyout. Shell is buying each share for 86 cents. You'll get 86 cents for each share you own and you will be exited from your position of Volta and have no position in Shell. That would just be the end of the deal. The other ticker is CBDW. Uh, this came onto the market on the 17th. This stock was a restricted stock from its beginning. Back in February 2021, it was a spin out from Sing, ticker S I N G. The shares were restricted, you couldn't sell them anywhere. Well, it came on the market on the 17th for a penny, and on the 18th, it went to $4.49. That is a 44,900% gain. Then she fell back to 85 cents, which is 2,300% gains. Sounds great, doesn't it? Well, here's the bad news. They're still restricted shares. Founding shareholders, me and you, if we hold the shares, we cannot sell them. Who's buying in them, selling them? I presume brokers, markers, insiders, but not your everyday public investor. So if you've got shares of this, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not going to be able to sell them. I don't know why it's on the public market. Now, when we looked at it, it was 85 cents. And I said, folks, this is a wild card. Something's going on. This looks like it's going to pop. I'm sure we can get two to 300 out of this tomorrow. Well, it went 400%, over $5. And still, they're restricted shares, so you can't cash in on it. Now, another thing I did, which is very helpful for me because I get to pass the information on to you, I was going through all the stocks that we've been looking at on these videos uh, for about 10 months back. I brought them up on the charts and I wanted to see from the day we looked at them, how many of them made gains and how many of them fell. And I got a lot of good information from that. But what I really saw was how many stocks we looked at that had highs they've never returned to. You know, we find stocks that have these massive runs, and I share them with you, but they don't continue on, which is really why we're looking at them. We're hoping they're going to continue on, but they don't. Not after these massive runs. They come down, 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 and they just keep falling. And I really don't want to do that. I don't want to show you stocks that have already had massive runs. You can learn a lot from them. Why did they run in the first place and such? But hopefully we've gotten through all that. So now we want to accumulate that knowledge and we want to try to identify stocks that have not run yet, but look like they're just about to. We're looking for the tiny bubbles on the bottom of the pot, not the roaring bubbles, not the big roaring boil yet, just the starts of the boil. So <clears throat> what I did, as I came over here to my TOS, Think or Swim, this is a free trading platform you can get from TD Ameritrade. Oh, excuse me for a second. Echo, set timer for 45 minutes. 45 minutes, starting now. All right, I do want to keep this to a limit. I start talking, I forget what time it is, and I don't have Lily here to tell me how much time is left. So, my little Alexa over there will let me know. So I started going through charts the other day and what I was looking for were charts that showed any signs of heat. We're looking for a change in trend. We're looking for volume spikes. We're looking for something that looks like the chart is about ready to do something. Once I found a chart that had some heat, 
I went to see if there was any lingering news. Now, what I'm talking about is news that's a little old, not news from yesterday or even last week, news from at least a month ago, something that may have said, oh, we're cutting a deal, we've made a joint venture, we expect it to close in the next 30 days, right? Now, there's no news come out, they haven't said it's closed, they've given us nothing, but people are watching the calendar, people are watching that stock, and they know about 30 days is up, so now's the time to get a position, and you'll see the stock start to grow, but you won't see anything why it's growing but it's there a month ago in the lingering news. Now I went out and I found pieces of news, filings, these lingering pieces of heat that look like they could ignite and get this stock to move. Not just this stock, but all the ones we're gonna look at. Now I may forget to talk about some of the information I found, but I took screenshots of each. So even if I forget, when I do my edits, I'll be able to toss those in so that you can at least keep up with the information that I found. I'll try to remember as much as I can as we're going through. So this is the first stock we're gonna take a look at and I didn't hand pick anything. I just went through the charts from top to bottom and just started looking. Some are warrants, one might be a SPAC, I don't know. I just picked any stock that looked like it had a chance of growing here in the next few days. First one we're taking a look at is EVTG. They had lingering news on the 18th of November. That is a ways back, but that's pretty much the last piece of news that they had. Uh, they were to air on Bloomberg, which they did do. But they said in this news press that they were getting into an agreement to acquire Moak International. Moak International is an EV car maker. Their cars look like Jeeps, kind of. So they didn't give us any dates. They didn't tell us anything. They just said, including the definitive agreement to acquire Moak International. So there could be something going on that we see the chart showing right now, even though there's no filings or news. So this is our chart. This is a six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here of $1.60. That is in August. She's been falling ever since then. And we've got ourselves a channel right now where she's definitely locked herself in. Now this is what's called a regression channel. It's got a halfway point right there in the middle, a line going down the middle of the road. So this is the lower half and the upper half, and we look for it to get above the upper half and see if she'll make a move to that top line, which we've just had right now. And look at all that volume that came in today. Lots of volume without any new catalyst, no fresh news, no filings. Now what stood out here to me was this pattern. These are my oscillators, my percentage price oscillator at the top. My MACD, these two are cousins to each other. They're both the same sort of oscillator. You read them the same, but the MACD uses the full price and a percentage price oscillator uses a percentage of the price. That's right. And then we have our RSI down here, and this is my ADX. Now, I purposely put my PPO on the top and my ADX right up underneath it. What an ADX is, is trend continuation. We are looking for this line to be straight, as straight as can be. We don't want it to change direction. Now, it doesn't matter if it's going up, doesn't matter if it's going down or sideways. It's not about, it's not about up or down, it's about just continuation. This tells me if my trend, like see the green bar here, and then it turned red, come straight down. You can see we had a change in direction. Okay, from that red bar, she's been falling, 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 till right here. There's that green bar. So we had a straight line between there, all that fall. As soon as it changed direction on the trend, your line changes. Well, look, we got a serious change of direction here. Now, this is the pattern I look for with my PPO and my ADX. Right in this area, you see the mirror image here. Look at your blue line on your PPO coming down and our red line on our ADX coming up. They're getting closer and closer and closer. Anytime you see that, guaranteed, 100% your price is falling. When you see it get to a point of being as close as it can get and then start to spread apart like we see right there, the bottle cap, it's opening up, that is a guaranteed change of direction and trend. It means your price is going up now. And as long as those two lines continue to go apart, it is climbing. Now, if either one changes direction, you know your climb has stopped. That's a good exit signal right there. So I love to use this. Our MACD has been growing for seven days and has now turned strong. 
pushing towards our signal line and you can see we've had a strong push in our RSI today. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot to see here. She's gotten up over that channel. Let's come on down to that five day view. Well, there you go. So back here, we had a low of nine cents. That was on the third, the seventh that traded, the 18th, big dry spot between the seventh and the 18th. 19th and then the 20th and the 20th we had a lot of trading steady climbing all the way up she started down here at a low of uh nine and a half cents and went to 19 cents 100 percent gain on the money right there 100 percent gain she is now pulling away from her nine day sma see how she was sitting right on top of it here and now she's starting to pull away. Well, there's a rubber band connecting these two. If the price gets too far away from that nine day, you know it's gonna come back down to it. And if it comes down with any speed, it could break that and come down even further. But we would hope if everything was strong that she would be like a rubber ball in water coming down under the water and then coming back up and surfacing on the top. Our technicals are strong on the five minutes and that's where you're looking for continuation. Now, I'm not just talking continuation. I'm talking a growth spurt here. They could drop a piece of news any day saying we just acquired Moak. They gave us a heads up. And if that dropped and you were in now, boom, you could catch yourself a nice run. Now, when I say she's pulling away, that's an indicator that you may not want to get in right now. You want to monitor this. She could come back down 50%. She could come down 50% from that 919, about 10 cents. Somewhere in that 11, 10 cent range, she could come down to that range. And you would look for that roll. Uh, we do have a roll starting, but it's really tough to tell where she's going to go. EVTGF. News press comes, she could bounce. This is one you can consider. Let's take a look at another stock here. This is BLNGW. BLNGW. All right, they are in talks of a merger right now with an unnamed plant-based food company that is said to have $50 million worth of revenue. Rumor has it, as people have done some homework, I have not, but rumor has it, it could be Impossible Foods. That could be the company that they're merging with. And they just filed a form, a 13G, which is just like a 13D. They're simple, short forms. Basically, it means a new ownership was created. Somebody invested some money and got so many shares that they are now part owner of the company. And they just filed one of those the other day, which means somebody put a big chunk of money into this company and they've got voting rights. Something could happen, something could change, something is transpiring right now. Don't know exactly what it is, but something's going on. So let's take a look at the chart. Let's go back four months, uh, four hours, six months. So she's been falling all of this time. She hit a low bubble here, and you can see during that low bubble, she had a lot of volume. The low bubble hit this day, and then this day, lots of volume came in, though there wasn't anything happening. That's called consolidation. When people are buying and selling just little bits, it's just settling. And it settled here with all this volume, and then she started to grow. Right after that, you got your green bar, and she's starting to work her way up. Once she got on to the 50-day SMA, my yellow bar here, she was just laying there, getting her footing, and then took a huge leap here, and she did jump from about three and a half cents up to 53 cents. Oh my God. Uh, you're looking at 1,500% uh, uh, gains, is that right? I think that's right. A little more than that, 1,000. 500% gains on that rip. And she came down and she landed right here. I do believe that is our 50% mark. I'm gonna use what's called the Fibonacci. Fibonacci, you get it? You poke the bottom of your surge, poke the top of your surge, and then look for the 50% mark. Okay, we are a little bit below it. Here's our 50% mark right here in the center. I look for halfway point. That's a perfect average. 50% is a perfect average. And that's what all of the charting is about, averages. There are just hundreds, thousands, millions of averages being computated all the time. So that's a perfect average. And I look for prices to fall to the 50% mark and sit there if it was a price adjustment. If it's uh, activity volatility from the investors, she could end up anywhere. And she's stuck between the two right now. I'm gonna get rid of that so that doesn't confuse us anymore. 
So she came all the way back down to her 50-day SMA, hit it hard, and is now bouncing back up, is on top of her 200. Now, this was her first break in the 200 in a while. She had a break back here, settled down, a huge break here, a defining moment, mind you, came back down. This is her third attempt going through the 200. Third attempt is normally a charm, folks. This is normally where you get your run. Look at our technicals. All of our technicals are very strong on the four hour. Everything is pushed up. We have had a little bit of pullback on our RSI, but things look good. Volume has not come in yet, meaning she's still under the radar, but the technicals are starting to build. 20 day, one hour view. So there's your big pop. She came down, landed, I mean, securely right on that 50 day SMA has gotten on top of her 20, and look, she's sitting right on top of her nine-day SMA launching. Perfect, it's just a beautiful launch. All of our technicals on the one hour look like she wants to continue. Volume was growing at the end of the day. Five day, five minute. She's been growing ever since she hit this low bubble of four cents. She has been pushing up gently, had that nice push here, but came back down holding her sentiment you know she doesn't want to get out of bounds you get too far away from the nine you have to come back you have to come closer to it so this could settle back on the nine you can see how she was sitting very firmly right on it not near it on it right now she is above it so she could come back down to touch it so i would keep my eye out for this company they have a merger that they're talking about we don't have any information they come out with information and tell us who it is that's going to help if it's impossible foods that's going to help even more but whoever it is they're making money these facts don't get with no name companies that aren't doing anything they find companies that are in business making money got products and are probably going to be successful so b l n g w we are looking at the warrant, in case you didn't realize that. We are looking at the warrant. Uh, the warrant is a stock that you can trade like any other stock. Don't let the word warrant bother you. There's preferred shares. There's ADS shares. There's warrants. Uh, there's Class A. There's all different types of stocks. As long as you can get in and get out whenever you want, that's what's important. What a warrant has is an added benefit that it can be used as a mini option, a coupon. Normally within five years, it allows you in a SPAC to buy a share of stock for $11.50 anytime you want in the next five years, regardless of the price of the stock. So in four years, if the stock is at $80, all you need to do is give them one of your warrants, $11.50, and they'll sell you a share for $11.50 when it cost 80 bucks. And you can turn around and sell that share today and get all that money. That's why people like warrants, especially when they get cheap. It's a win-win situation. I'm buying warrants very cheap that I'm going to be able to make a lot of profit on on the other end. Waha! They love them. All right, let's take a look at CEOS. I want to back this out. And what can I tell you about CEOS? I do have some information over here I'm trying to keep handy for us. All right. Uh, it was back on, let's see if I can get the date here. December 19th, they came out with news that they had signed a binding letter of intent to acquire Vetcom. Uh, Vetcom is a veterans education and benefits company focused on assisting over 20 million United States veterans that qualify for underutilized annual benefits. As a result, billions of dollars in veteran benefits go unclaimed every month in the United States. So this company's obviously found some way to make money on helping vets get their benefits. And when you look at their revenues, they are growing growing at an incredible rate, folks. They went from nothing to $816,000 in three months and then jumped to $17 million the next three months. Something's going on. So those are two things that definitely have uh, potential to cause this stock to run. All right, so we're looking at a six-month, four-hour chart. Six months she has been in this channel, folks. Six months, she has not gone anywhere. She has tried to break out a couple times and she's doing it right now. The difference between this attempt and this attempt is the volume. All that volume right there is what's different. That is fresh and new. So we had a very strong push right here. She did not fall down too far. We're still above that middle line right here, above our 50 day, 
pushing above our nine day to cross the 200 day SMA. And let's see, we're actually over right now. We are at the 29 cent mark. Now backing up, what was her high on this? I do want to see what sort of potential we got. We had a high of uh, 8.2 cents. Right now we are at 3 cents. So you're looking at 250% gains if she got up to there. Now I'm not expecting her to run to that distance, but there is no telling. But we could get some gains. That's what we're talking about. You can see our technicals here have had a decisive moment. They started to fall real hard and turned around very quickly and abruptly and are pushing up. Our MACD has done the same exact thing and she has had her crossover right now and our RSI is quickly approaching the overbought. 20 day, one hour view. So there's your big pop that was about a week ago. She went to three and a half cents. Right now we are at uh, almost three cents. So that would be maybe uh, what, a 10% gain, something like that. So there's not a lot of gain to this high. Technical show she's on her way up. Every single oscillator is pushing up right now. That is an excellent sign. And of course, as I said, her revenues have increased. And that's really what got me. I mean, yeah, they may be closing this deal. They may have this uh, Vetcom deal, which we don't have any idea when that's going to be. They didn't give us any dates. They didn't tell us when they were thinking of closing, not even a season. So we don't know. But I do know that right now the revenues are increasing at leaps and bounds exponentially from zero to 816,000 to 17 million. That's just phenomenal. So that in itself really caught my attention. No, I don't want that. <laughs> Let me get rid of that. And coming down to our five day, five minute view. So on Friday, we did have a lot of growth. You can see she was under the 200 here really fighting hard, trying to get on top over and over and over again and could not do it. Hit a low bubble here. That didn't seem to help at all. She's struggling. And then on Friday, she finally got over top of it. Not over, only over top of the 200, but she got on top of that bar right here. She is on top of it at almost three cents, looking like she wants to continue her climb. Look at our PPO. That has been climbing all Friday and is getting stronger at the end of the day. Same with our MACD. She was climbing all day and got very strong at the end of the day. And our RSI went into the overbought and is currently at 74 on the five minute chart. All right, we got another warrant here for you folks. This is Bytes, uh, ticker BYTSW, Byte Acquisition Core. This is a SPAC. Let me take this back out to four months. All right, we are looking at this for a particular reason, but what did I learn about this company? All right, she too had a 13G filed just the other day. 13G is when you have new owners come into the company, people that invest so much money that they get so many shares that it qualifies them for ownership. They can vote to do things in the company. Well, as you can see here, there's quite a lot of them. They had quite a lot of new companies just invest into this company. That's huge. You see how many we got there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine. I'm not too sure. I can't tell. But there's a lot of companies that just invest, and I think they all got 4.2% uh, controlling voting power in this company. So that was a heads up to me right there. I didn't see a whole lot more to consider, but looking at the chart, looking at that news, now, what really caught my attention with this chart are those bounces, folks. This is a four hour, six month chart. You can see she had no activity, no volatility back here, hit a low bubble, consolidated. We had one huge bar break the 50. That's what you normally see as a big bar when she gets on top of the 50 means to stay up there. She came back down sitting on her 20 day. Now, I got arrows here at each one of these bounces. These huge bounces here, they are jumping from about three and a half cents up to 40 cents plus. You're looking at over a thousand percent jump on each one of these bars and look how close they are day after day after day. This little itty bitty bounce right there, would you believe that's 250% gains right there, folks? That's nothing to sneeze at. No, it doesn't look like that, but I'd take that absolutely. And it looks like she took her big jump up, hit her high here, came down, laid really hard on that 50-day SMA, 
and is now about ready to bounce again. I see her bounce once and here she goes. Our technicals don't show a lot of strength here, but they do show upward mobility. Everything is starting to turn up just a little bit. 20 day, one hour view. So this is uh, Friday. When was this? So this was the 18th, 19th, 20th. So this was all the way back on the 3rd, uh, the 29th of December, and the 28th of December. So it's not that I'm saying it's gonna happen now. I don't know the timing of this. What I see is a pattern. Little jumps, which add up to a lot. Big jumps, which are just mind boggling, thousand percent gains. So if this thing bounces again, because it's right at that same floor, it's sitting exactly where it bounces from, we could see another bounce just like these, or maybe just those. Either case, 250 to 1,000% gains just on the warrant itself. So right now, she is at $0.06. Cents. If she was to jump to $0.42, cents, that would give you 5, 6, 7, 700% gains. <laughs> That's juicy. And it looks like our technicals are about ready. Look at this. We got a crossover on our PPO just about ready to occur. We've just had a crossover on our MACD. She's about ready to go over a signal line and our RSI is now pushing up just about ready to enter into the 60 zone. We see anything on the five day, five minute? Not really. Just that big jump and she came back down right about under 50% mark here. Half all the way up, halfway down, and she's starting to jump again. And she's put herself, does that price actually go there? Our price is six, seven. Yes, our price is right there, folks, right over top of that 50 day SMA. And on the five minute chart, she looks like she's ready to grow. I'm not saying take off, but it looks like that trend is going to continue. And you could get that real quick bounce. Remember, we're looking at charts, what was that, on the hourly? Yeah, so that's an hour. I don't know. I could come in. I do have a special one that zooms in on this at least down to 10 minutes. So these bars were here at least 10 minutes. Could just be five, could just be a minute. I'd have to set up my charts to reach back this many days because it brings up a lot of bars. But that is a 10 minute bar there. So we think you have at least 10 minutes to catch that gain. So BYTSW folks, if you want to catch a 200 to 1000% jump, that looks like there is a strong possibility of it coming. We're now going to take a look at Barry, Blue Earth Resources, ticker B-E-R-I. Let's see what I can find out about Barry. Blue Earth Resources recently signed a letter of intent to become a joint venture partner in the exclusive hydrogen distribution agreement that will position the company to be participating in the coming green energy focused economy. So, we don't have any dates, we don't know who, we don't know when, we just know that that came out December 5th. So we're just looking at lingering news and we're looking at the charts. Now this chart doesn't stand out real strong. However, I see some potential here. This is a, oh, that's a, let's come in on a better chart than that. All right, that's a six month, four hour chart right there. She had a run here from 11 cents up to 58 cents. So you're looking at 500% gains here. Then she came all the way back down to basically where this started bounced off of that and is running up again. Now you see this square I've got drawn here? Look at our run. Our run came up and then you got these stutterings right here, these red bars where she fell right to the base of this box and then took this huge jump up before falling. Now she's rolled back up. We've had our surge up right here. She's stuttering again in the exact same quadrant same exact low. She stuttered and now she jumped back up and she's pushing out and she's over the box right now, just like she did here. So we could see a gain. Now this isn't going to be as huge a gain as the last one. Right now we are at 39 cents and this is about 59 cents. So you're looking at 50% uh, uh, gains, 50% gains, but the technicals look like they're ready to do just that. We've had a decisive change in our PPO, bounced down and is pushing up. We see our ADX is going down, right? We got that spread going on. We have a very strong turnaround on our MACD with a crossover and our RSI has jumped, though it's pulling back just a little bit. We don't see any volume yet. There's no volume come in on this. This is just a regular common stock, not a warrant of any sort. 20 day, one hour view. 
So there's your box right there. She came right down to that and bounced off of that pretty hard. She jumped from 25 cents up to 40 cents. That's a nice climb right there in two days. And she is on top of that 50 day SMA. Now she rode her nine day SMA up and then crashed here. I have no idea why she crashed. We're just watching the pattern right now. She is going up and she is bouncing off of that one spot that looks like was a strong support back there. Technicals on our one hour. We got that spread on our PPO and our ADX. Blue line going up, ADX going down. Ooh, look at that beautiful crossover on our MACD climbing up. And right now our RSI is just stopped at 56. Volume is there. Nothing super potential, but potential is sitting there nonetheless. I'm going to get rid of this box. It's kind of blinding me. We'll get rid of all that. So there's your five day, five minute. Now again, this is a stock on the NASDAQ. No, this is an OTC stock. So that was pre-market and we can't trade pre-market on the OTC, which is one of the things I do not like about the OTC market. You get your due diligence done on Friday. You want to get it on Monday. You've got your price all set up. You're knowing exactly what you're going to do. And then it starts climbing climbing, climbing, pre-market, and you and I aren't doing that. It's marketers, it's brokers, it's insiders, it's people who have more advantage than we do, which is very frustrating. As far as I'm concerned, if anybody is allowed to buy it, I should be allowed to buy it too. If they can sell it, I can sell it. It should be a fair open market. In either case, there are people trading pre-market. But you can see they drove it all the way up here to 40 cents. And when the market opened, it fell all the way down here to 31 cents before starting to climb back up. You want to be careful about doing anything at the bell. You want to see what's going on. Don't take what's happened pre-market as gospel of direction. I guarantee you it can change direction just like that. All right, let's take a look at another company I've got here. Ticker C-U-E-N back out to that four hour view. And let's see what news I got here for CUEN. This came out January 9th, so about 10 days ago. They tell us that the company has signed a binding letter to acquire a $2 million membership interest in a core development holdings company in Florida. The transaction is scheduled to close as soon as practical. So. There you go. We don't have a date, but that was a few days ago. Now, it seems to me it's a little early, but it's been 10 days, but I don't think things happen that fast. But in either case, that's the lingering news we got right now. The chart, looking at our six-month, four-hour chart. We had a high back here of $1.12, which she almost hit here on the 19th. She got up to $1.08. This high was hit back here in August. So we almost hit the high, but not, not there exactly. Stuck in this channel. She was trying to break through here. Got real close, but the 200-day stopped her. Hit a low bubble here and then crossed over. And here recently, she has started taking off. You can see once she got out of that box, folks, right? Once she got out of that channel, that's when the growth started. That's why we look for these channels. We look for the road it's on. And once they get off road, they are gone. Our technicals are very strong. For about 10 days, everything has been climbing. Nice incline, steadily growing. Volume has definitely dropped. On Thursday, it was much stronger than Friday, but Friday she held her own. No doubt about that. 20-day, one-hour view. So there's that channel. Everything gets a little flatter the closer you come in. You can see she was underneath everything here, underneath the nine. She got on top of her nine, which is the most important move you can make. You got to be on the nine if you want your price to climb. If ever you see the price come underneath your nine day, she's in falling mode. She's in falling. I try not to buy a stock until it's over the nine because under the nine, it can still fall. Why buy a stock while it's still falling? So once she got over the nine, she started to grow. She got on top of her 50, bounced right here in one, two, three days. She had some good growth going on. Took a break here on Wednesday. Thursday, she shot up like a rocket from 46 cents up to $1.09. You're looking at 125, 140% gains right there. Came back hard, right back to that line, right? You can see she's bouncing off of it. And she took another jump today, uh, on Friday that is, from about 56 cents up to 95. You're looking at 80, 85% gains there. And then it 
fell back. Technicals are calming down a little bit right now. She is fluctuating back and forth. Let's look at that five day, five minute. So there's your run. She's coming off that low bubble of 26 cents. She crossed out of the channel right there. When she got out of the channel, she got excited, started pushing up, bounced right off of the line here. Our new um, trend line bounced way up, came down. You can see she's sitting right on top of it, folks. This is why drawing lines is so important. You think you can see them. But when you start drawing them, you then understand them. You see what's going on. You feel you have more control of the vehicle that you're driving here. So she's come up right at the end of Friday. She had a nice surge. She's come back down. I would expect it to bounce off of this and continue on. Technicals are weak right now. They're not showing a whole lot of strength. But they told us they are making a deal. We don't know when it's going to happen. And you do want to get on these before they start to climb. This one's already started to climb. Something must be going on. So another one to consider, ticker C-U-E-N. And the last stock we're going to take a look at, this is ticker F-O-X-O -O forward slash W-S. This is a warrant too. Now, what is it I can tell you about this one? Oh, yeah, this is a good one. They just had news on the 12th. They tell us that on January 10th, uh, Foxo Technologies entered into a merger agreement with Security Life Insurance. Foxo Life will merge with and into the buyer. So Security National will be the surviving entity. They're going to take over the SPAC. It's going to be their business. So that deal is transpiring right now. That's the sort of news you're kind of looking for all the time. So she was at 25 cents here. Uh, well, six months ago, is it actually in September? September, she was at 25 cents, hit a low here of one penny, and she floated on that one penny for quite a while. And then here in the last couple of days, she got up on top of everything and had a nice jump from three cents up to nine cents. That's a 300% gain. This is on the NASDAQ, so we can trade this. That's why I like trading warrants. Virtually all, not all, but virtually all warrants are on the major exchanges. There are penny stocks that are in the pennies, but you can trade them for free. You can trade them pre-market, after-market. Just remember to change your day order to day plus extension or good till canceled plus extension or to ignore your order. So you can get in there if you don't mind getting up early and you can catch these gains, folks. She ran, like I said, 300% before that bell and then fell and fell hard and came right back down to her 200 right now. Technicals have cooled off. They were hot, but everything is just kind of flat right now on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour. All right. She got above her 50. You can see she was underneath her nine here. The price got up onto the 50, took a few days to do it had a dip, came back up, and now has negotiated onto the 200. Now look, every time she comes up onto the 50, you see the bars get bigger. You got these little itty bitty baby teeth back here when it's under the nine. When it gets on top of the nine, the bars get bigger. When you get on top of the 50, the bars get bigger. When you get on top of the 200, the bars get bigger. She has come all the way back down here, folks. And what I see here, look at this. This is a perfect price adjustment. I'm going to grab my Fibonacci tool here. And let me see. I'm going to close in on this. And I am going to hit the low here. And I'm going to come all the way out here to do it so we can see our lines better. And we're going to go all the way to the top of that surge. I'm not right on it, but I want you to see the lines. Here's our 50% mark right there. So the surge took off, went all the way up, and came right down. And boom! landed right on that 50% mark, a perfect, a perfect average up and down like it meant to be there. Then it fell, came down, you had this jump, and I'm going to get rid of this Fibonacci here, and I'm going to put this back up right here. Let me stretch this a little bit. I'm going to put it on this one, up to there. Our fi no, I don't want that one. Our 50% line is right there right there folks she is sitting on it so she went up here came down exactly on the 50 percent dropped bounced and fell exactly on the 50 percent on this one to me that is a decisive movement it is a price adjustment it meant to get above there perfectly it's a perfect jump up and down and she's sitting exactly where she should be in the middle of this bar 50 percent technicals are still pretty blase 
There's nothing there to get excited about. However, she does look like she could jump. She just had news. The next piece of news could cause this to jump. Now, remember, folks, when we're looking at these warrants on SPACs, let's say like that one. We just saw the news. It came out on the 12th. Let's say the 13th. I don't know. Did, did she run on the 13th? Well, it did not move. You can see through the 11th and the 13th, there's not a lot of move here. Now, it did move. It did go from two cents to three cents. So you are looking at about a 50% jump here. But she was under the 200, trapped over her 50. But not a lot of reaction. And this is what I'm getting at. Just because we read news today about a SPAC making a merger doesn't mean the warrant's going to run tomorrow. You would presume so, but that doesn't necessarily mean so. But it doesn't mean it's not going to delayed reaction folks they're huge with these facts delayed reaction so if you saw news and it had not jumped would still be a good time to get in even if she had a little jump because she's underneath any of her big smas would be a good time to get a position now i'm not talking a big one look folks you can capitalize on SPACs real big if you were to buy a SPAC for 50 dollars, you only bought 50 dollars worth and it goes up Let's say a thousand percent. Now I'm seeing them go multiple thousand. A couple hundred percent jump is meager on a SPAC. Thousand percent is, well, it's okay, but it's kind of chump change. We're looking at 3,000, 8,000, 20,000 percent gains. A $50 bill is just some light grocery money, real light, one little bag. So $50, like this one maybe, right? I'm just saying, this one, you say, oh, I like the company they're merging with. I could see that being successful, and it's only at a little bounce, or it's had its bounce. I missed it. Well, this is only the beginning. They've got many stages to go before they complete this deal. So you could buy down here at the bottom again and wait for the next piece of news. This has told you there was excitement. People do watch this stock. It does move. People took their gains. Now you're ready for the next piece of news. Now, my favorite piece of news is a vote. A meeting for a vote. They haven't even had the vote yet. And the, and the warrant will run. That's the beginning because then the next piece of news is an approval. Yes, we do want a time extension. We don't want the company to be closed down after 18 to 24 months. We want an extra month or two months. So you're going to vote on it. People are excited. You're not going to close the company down. I'm not going to get my money back without any gains. You're going to keep trying. Fantastic. Then when they get approval, another bounce on that warrant. Then the reason they got the time extension was to find a deal. They go find a deal and said, we're in talks to make a merger with this space company. Talk about space. Watch that warrant take off. Don't hang on to them. Take those huge runs. Get out. Now, whatever gains you made, let's just make it easy for simple. Let's say you get 1,000% gains on your 50 bucks. That's $500. Now go find 10 SPACs that have all had recent news, little news, meetings, approvals, maybe a, a deal, and put down on 10 of them. Yes, go buy 10 at 50 bucks a piece. Look, right now, six out of 10 pieces of news on SPACs are running. Six out of 10. So if you just bought 10, you could expect six of them to run. Meager gains is a thousand percent. Normal gains are multiple thousands. So if you had a $50 bill in each of them and you had six of them run just a thousand percent gain, that would be $3,000 you would be getting. If they did more than that, you'd make more. Now, maybe you don't want 10 at 50. Maybe you want five SPACs at 100. It goes up 10,000%. Your $100 bill just made you 10,000% gains. So you have stock warrants on these SPACs that make huge gains, bigger gains than most other stocks are doing. They're doing it on a regular basis. The news has bigger odds of moving. You look at regular OTC news, 10 pieces of news, you're lucky if three of those stocks run. SPAC news, six out of 10 are moving. Maybe not today, but in the next few days, there is a bounce. And if you missed that bounce, know there's more coming because it's just a progression. And when it comes down, get yourself a position. Remember, it's not a big one. And this is what I'm gonna be doing, folks, because when those six hit and you make money on those and you go get 50 SPACs, or maybe you put $200 in each, you get 10 at $200 each because you have the money. 
Wow, folks, we could be hitting home runs after home runs after home runs, increasing our odds by buying more of them on that original $50 we invested. You're playing on house money now. Get one to double, triple, quadruple, 10 times, 15 times. Go buy more, a bunch of them on SPACs, not just any old SPAC, SPACs with news, SPACs with meetings, SPACs with votes, SPACs with mergers. These are the ones that are going to bounce and all of them don't have to bounce. And of course, you're not going to lose your money. You can pull your money out anytime you want. Free to trade, right? Maybe it does fall. Maybe your $50 on one of them falls to $20. $20. It could happen. Well, if you're making $500, $1,000 off of your other ones, if you're making $10,000, are you worried about that one? This is why I like these. The warrants have better odds. They have better gains and you can lose one. And I'm not even thinking about losing. I'm thinking that they're all hot. All of them. As long as they don't cancel a deal and back out of a deal, the chances of it growing are good. So folks, don't forget to SPAC warrants. So there's your information, folks. I've given you some stocks to watch. They all have lingering news. They've all had filings put in for something happening, new ownership, deals they made that were waiting to finish, and the charts looking like they have some heat building up. Little tiny bubbles at the bottom of the pot. Is it going to bubble and roll? We don't know, but that's why we're watching them. Remember, folks, I didn't cover all the information. Some more due diligence can help. And like I said, all you've got to do is come over to a scan and just start going through your watch list by poking them. I have it set up. Oh, that's the wrong color. And like I said, my video will show you how to do this, folks. You can just click a button and you can see each stock as you're going along. I've also got it set up so that you can put your watch list over here and be just using your arrows to go through each one and the whole screen becomes a chart. It's worth the time to take a look, folks. I tell you what, I give you a lot of uh, shortcuts in there to save you a lot of time and get a lot of research done. All right, I will see you on Monday. We will have three new hot stocks and I'm not bringing you stocks that have already run, but stocks that are starting to get hot. It's going to make it tougher for me to do, trying to put my wizard hat on and predict winners. But that's why you come, isn't it? Thanks. I appreciate it. Remember, folks, the more you know, say it with me, the more we're going to grow. That's right. See ya.